Hello, this is Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and I just finished this ribbed rectangle blanket. That's what I'm going to call it. And oh my gosh, I'm in love again, of course. I'm using Peyton's Beehive Baby Sport, which I think is just a little bit different than other little sport weight yarns maybe because that it's acrylic and it has nylon in it. And so it makes it just a little bit stretchier and super, super soft. So this is the yarn I'm using. It's a light three weight, but I did go up a hook, hook size. It calls for an F, but I went up to a G because when I find that I'm working with these ribbed stitches, which is just front post and back post double crochet, it um, can get a little bit too tight. So I like to go up a hook size. And then I just use the same stitch for the border. Okay, you're going to want to print off the graph that is on our website. We have the link down in the descriptions. And this will really help you to um, visualize the stitches that you're going to do. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with a pattern repeat of 15 plus 2. So I've got 32 chains on my hook here. And so if you wanna go ahead and do that and we will work up a little swatch together. So for this first row, you're only going to want to work a row of all double crochet. So go ahead and start in the fourth chain from the hook with your regular double crochet and work one per chain and at the end of the row, you should have worked 29 double crochets and we're going to count those first three chains that we skipped over as a stitch so that there'll be exactly 30 um, stitches across, including that turning chain. All right, I'm here at the end of the row. I've got all of my double crochet made and I'm just going to chain two and turn. Now, when you look at the graph, the way I've done it is that I've got just the, you know, we're just gonna be doing this much, one through 30. Every box counts for a stitch. So it's most important to remember that the very, even the turning chain counts as, you know, stitch number one. So we are going to start, start our graph right here at the bottom right hand corner, space number one, one, and work our way across. However, this turning chain is stitch number one. So now we'll work, work stitch number two and we will start with front post double crochet and you will work the next 15. Actually, the way this works is that every, if you look at the graph, every stitch across the bottom of the blanket will be a front post double crochet. That will help us get the very first uh, round completed. So just work front post double crochet across every single stitch. All right, don't forget that your last stitch actually will be, um, just work underneath those uh, first few chains that counted as the very first stitch on, the, on that base row. It's those chain threes that we skipped over. So just work one there, and that's your 30 double crochet. Now we're going to chain two, and you'll be working the graph now from left to right. If you notice on the graph, the number two is over here on your left side. So now the darker colors are those, you know, front posts that we're going to want the front post to look the same. But when you flip it, you're actually doing the opposite work. I know it's totally confusing, but once you get one work, I know it's totally confusing, but once you get one row of blocks, you'll be, you'll be totally fine with it. So we want to work, our, well, stitch number one actually is this turning chain on this left-hand side. So then we have a dark colored square 
and that is a front post double crochet except we want to work it as a back post because we want the pattern you know we want them to all stick to the same side so you'll work down following those dark gray actually working back post double crochet so that we can get the post to remain on the same side of the work and you're going to work down and when you get to that white space you'll switch and do a front post double crochet so really that's all this blanket is it's just a series of switching off and that's what creates the diagonal effect so keep coming down this way probably need to give count here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah fourteen obviously we're going to be doing one less but just make sure you count that turning chain one two three six seven eight nine here's ten 11 and maybe let me make sure I'm going really slow so you can see that I have to kind of poke that post to the back of my work to get it to stick out that way and then I'm just completing a double crochet stitch just like normal okay how many do I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten thirteen Here's number 14. So on the graph, on this 15th one, here we go. Pop this one forward. And then back to going this way. And when you get to the end of the row, just work around that turning chain. Make sure that's your last stitch and that will count as the last stitch. So pretty easy counting wise. All right, I'm going to just keep working my way down this row. All right, I've turned my work and following the graph now on row three, right to left, you're just going to follow those solid blocks of color. Um, well, the graph I printed turned out black and white, but um, I, the version uh, that we'll put up probably will have red if you had a color printer. It will print off red for you and just follow that down working the front posts and when I get down here you just are going to switch it up and do that back post double crochet just before the other one and that's you know to symbolize the white space so I think you probably have it so you probably just needed to watch me do these front and back post double crochet because that's all that really is. And then we will link um, another video that you can go to to learn our um, ribbing border, our ribbed border. So here I am, one before. I'm just going to switch that up, turn, get my hook back there, pop that to the front or to the back, I mean. Get that going. Do another one. And then I'll work on down the end of the row, back doing the front. And you know that little diagonal will just form. It's amazing. And I I have another blanket that I did in velvet and it's a diamond. And that one is a little this one turned out to be just a little bit easier to keep track of, you know, the one less, the one more and all of that and then um, like I said this is just a simple ribbed border I think I've done this around about six times and it's just alternating this exact same stitch except just every other one but I will put a link in um, the descriptions in order for you to watch how we do the to get a, a ribbed border it's a common thing that we do so anyway I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see this blanket I'm going to hold it up for you Okay, hi. Um, I just wanted to hold this up for you so that you could see maybe 
And I know it's so hard because it's white, but I wanted to do this because I love to have blessing blankets. And I thought that this would be a really pretty one for a little boy. It's a little bit more masculine looking to me. Maybe there you go. That's, you could see the, kind of almost looks like little, little, um, sails i was thinking so on a sailboat you know little sails but anyway that's the blanket cute it's just about i haven't measured it yet but i think it's about 32 inches wide and you of course could always make this ribbed border um much wider if you wanted to get the look so all of the information will be linked in the description if you're watching this on youtube and um, but if not you're probably already on my website and and you're looking at the pattern so good luck to you i hope it turns out really really cute i love it it's just so squishy and nice so squishy thank you everybody always for your kind comments you are so kind to us we're just a mom and daughter team sharing what we're making in hopes that i become a grandma someday and we just love doing it and um thank you so much all right have a good day